So we're here with Vuzix. Here, the SID Display Week. This is the prime display conference. So you were just at the CEO forum. Hi. <laughs> hey, Tarbox, how are you, man? Yeah, we're here at SID meeting with a lot of folks, etc. And one of the latest things that are going on at Vuzix is we're getting ready to ship our first waveguide-based product to the world. We've been talking about this technology for a long time. Hello. This is our first Blade, Vuzix Blade smart glasses. See here, and when you open this case up, there's a beautiful pair of glasses inside. And these glasses literally look like a conventional pair of glasses, maybe Oakley style kind of a thing. And yeah, just <laughs> because of the sound. Yeah, oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and we're starting production up this week, and we deal with things because we're a public company in quarters, so before this quarter is up, users will start shipping this product to the developer community. And the cool thing about these glasses is they, um, they first of all have processors built into them, they run Android, they have eight megapixel cameras over here, they have, in fact, let's pull them out of the box. So they have eight megapixel cameras here, when you put them on, you literally see a display floating out in front of you in here in space. So in these really thin top pieces, light gets injected into a thing we call a waveguide off of this temple. And it causes the light to bounce around inside and then projects effectively that image out in front of you in space here. And you develop that waveguide? Yes. In and with also partners and everything on the projection technology? Yeah, so most of this is done out of Rochester, New York. We have a semiconductor facility effectively is what it looks like. It's got class 1000 clean rooms. It's got ion beam etch equipment inside of it. It's, it's basically a facility that's designed to make the tools to create these waveguides, one. And then once the tools are done, we have nano replication equipment, robot assisted. You just give it a pile of blanks and it spits out finished parts. These devices are also being manufactured in Rochester, at least to start. So we have a robot assist production line in Rochester. You put the plastics in, the robot comes in, does all the gluing, does the assembly, and spits out a finished pair of plate smart glasses when it's done. So you say the quarter and the, the developers are going to get? Yes. And that means uh, there's a bunch. It's not, not just going to be a dozen. It's going to be no, hundreds no, we're, of there's well, How many are you going to get? Th out? We're thousands is the number. I, I'm not saying thousands will ship in the second quarter of this year, but that's we're, our first production runs are slated for as many as 10,000 pieces here for the year. And then when everything is smooth and everything just uh, is smoothing out in your system, you, in theory, your robots could be cranking out huge quantities? Yeah. No doubt about it. The tools are designed to support as much as 50,000 pieces on a monthly basis if we needed to. Um, I, I will say that what's cool about this product, out, out of the gates, it's a great developer tool. We have people that want to use them in all kinds of enterprise applications. But there's an application that runs on your phone that we call a companion app. Let me just open this up really quickly here. A little difficult floating in space like this. But you see here, this application is the companion app and what happens is these two Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connect right and then when you go in here well of course you can get the photos these are the photos that happen to be on this guy right now and they pull them off and you can share those socially etc but here within the app screen of course we have an app store that's the top click all of these other guys are the apps on the phone and or the glasses that allow you to manage communications between the two devices. So you can imagine running Google Maps over here. And if I set it up for notifications and alerts to be communicated, what will happen is as you're walking down the street and you get 250 feet from the street corner where you hang a right, that information just comes up in the glasses. Any notification, any app? Any app. If it supports notifications, if it supports um, alerts, those kinds of things, you can manage them all through this. This is just the beginning. You know, the whole idea here is, you imagine the way Google and ARKit and ARCore work today, right? At Google I.O., they were running the maps. You go like this, you type in where you're going, then you hold the phone up like this, and on the back of the phone you see down the street, and there's labeled on the street is the road you're going down, arrows telling you which way to go. So imagine that. Can we have that in the glass? That's the, that's the ultimate thing that's happening. People are learning to use their phones in a new paradigm. It's, they're augmented reality phones now. There's 100 million plus Android phones and 380 million Apple phones that support this function. And people are running around doing this now. It's becoming a new way to use the phone. It's no longer type on the keyboard or swipe. 
it's hold the phone up and connect digital to the real world and that is the first step to replacing all of that with just look through the glasses and there the information is. The world's changing and wearable display technology is going to be a big part of it coming up. Augmented reality on the phone first and then as soon as the glasses are sexy enough it's going to be the, the preferred method. Who is going to hold up their phone like this all day long and use it to connect the digital and the real world? Keep it in a pocket. Keep it in a pocket. And right? that, that's use display. Once in a while phone. you can use it to like configure your favorite apps and notifications otherwise you can keep it in a pocket yes and you can get your hands free and enjoy the real world with a little bit of uh, digital info right yes and the other cool bit is it it will support AI engines like Alexa right in Google Assistant so with the glasses on you can talk to them and say you know what are the directions to XYZ it'll come up what's the temperature today can you play this music for me today all of that hands free you can imagine things like um, Lens. There's so many Google-based AR applications that are already out there that are just waiting for a pair of glasses. And I want to go to that Amazon store and just look around and it's going to tell me what's healthy for me. Absolutely. With all these uh, augmented, or it doesn't have to be even the Amazon store, it should be every store. Dude, it's so simple. Everything needs to be augmented. With, with barcode scanning and the likes, you just walk in, you look, boop, it'll tell you the you can calorie count. It can recognize the milk, right? It can, it's just a milk carton. Well, that's that's lens. And yeah. with that, you can just look at it and say, that's a milk from XYZ. And it's not good for you to take the other milk yes. or something, for or example. Something, for example, yes. And so, so like, like you were saying, uh, uh, you want to merge digital with the real world. So it's also sensors, IoT, smartwatches, but you're like uh, doing the vision area. This is, these, the these, eyes are a very big part of what we sense, right? Yes. And these guys have all the sensors needed in it to do some of the, some of the more... It's the simpler stuff, okay? It's not the hollow lens, stick the monitor up in the corner when you look back, it's still over in the corner. But it knows where it's looking in space. The cameras with, with the right vision software running on it can recognize things in the real world. There's gyros, accelerometers, magnetic field sensors. So this thing's all sensored up, ready to do location-aware content. Just for a second, can you hold my camera? Certainly I can. Yeah. And just point at me, and if I just want to... I just like the idea, you know, the to look cool. I mean, I look cool, right? Heck yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I um, it's it's not like uh, weird. It's just uh, it's just sunglasses basically, and there's the screen right here. Yep, it looks like a pair of uh, Oakley-esque style. Because uh, a lot of Gas these tech, tech tech gadget blogs and everything, they all they all thinking that they are like fashion reviewers and they are checking the styles and everything. This is important. You have style right here. But are you a fashion company or not necessarily? Well, because it looks like cool. We, we are not Oakley, <laughs> <laughs> right? That said, the tech that's in here fits in an Oakley sized device. And this is not bad. There are people that look really good with these glasses on. You I know, do, right? Like, yeah, I think you do. <laughs> they're, they're, you know, it's like anything, right? The style, the look and feel of a person depends a lot upon what they like and how they feel when they're wearing it. There's a lot of people that really like these. You'll see over time many different versions of these glasses coming, and you will confident will see them branded by some of the major brands at the same time. Uh, of course, I don't want to ask anything secret, but I can imagine that your office might be really fun with all your your R and D guys and girls, and uh, uh, they're getting uh, because I don't want to ask anything, right? But uh, there's potential advances in the optics, even higher resolutions. Maybe the batteries can last longer. Maybe there's so many stuff. There's so all much stuff that. that's going to happen. It's all going to be physics, and right? And shrinking of the sizes of things. I mean, you know what our ultimate goal is? We want to make the kind of glasses that are in the movie The Kingsman. That's where we'd like to get. And I don't know if you've seen that movie or not before, but if you haven't, I highly recommend The Kingsman and Kingsman 2. These yeah. glasses are sexy, sleek, and trim. We're not there yet. What did he do in The Kingsman with the glass? Well, you put the glasses on, and in one scene, they're in a they're in a, an office with a, a giant table, and there's people sitting all around the table, and only two people sitting around that table are real. The glasses are on. Everybody else that's there is teleporting in, and you see them through the glasses. At one point in in the second movie, he's got the glasses on, and he's at his girlfriend's house with her dad, 
who's kind of a stickler and he's getting all kinds of help answering questions through the glasses from one of his friends that's sitting back comfortably in an apartment. That's really cool. I just did the video with the um, uh, uh, analyst from a DSCC and he was saying that, uh, for example, Taiwan and Korea needs to come, with some, come up with something new and especially the US need to come up with something new yeah, and you're doing it right now, right? <laughs> because you, 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 you can't just like, uh, companies can't just do business as usual. Yeah, let me you say, have to do something new and we have to be able to do this. This right. vision has to happen in the next couple of years. It is very new in one sense and that it finally is starting to look like something people would wear. Conceptually though, we've been doing this at Vuzik since 1997. So we've been pushing the envelope and trying to finally get to a form factor that people would wear. And this is, I gotta say, closer than anything anybody has done to date.